All right, so I'm back with exotic armor as promised. We're gonna start with Titan, and then we're gonna do Warlock, and then we're gonna do Hunter. Uh, this is an overall end game tier list, so we're gonna consider the viability of all of these exotics on average across all end game activities, whether we're talking about solo GMs to fire team GMs to legend loss sectors to day ones to speedrunning, all that sort of stuff. We're gonna consider the average viability for all of these exotics across all of those activities. So this tier list, you might notice, we have a new friend uh, in, our, in our ranks here. We have an F tier. And the reason for that is uh, I have decided now, and probably for a future tier list as well, that I'm probably not gonna label the tiers. Uh, labeling the tiers kind of boxes me into uh, you know, putting some exotics in tiers that don't really make sense. Like uh, if I label a tier situational, for example, there might be an exotic that is applicable to a lot of activities, but it's just not very good in all of those activities. So it's not very situational necessarily, but it's more like, you know, we, we should be ranking based on average power and viability. So I decided to just lump stuff into like just regular tiers overall. And uh, I think I, based on the exotic tiering that I was doing, I think an F tier was kind of in order uh, because there are quite a big, there, there's quite a large number of exotics in terms of power ranking and I wanted to group them kind of effectively. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for how we're gonna be tiering these. Uh, there's also a ranking system, like uh, like usual, I'll be mentioning the rank of each exotic as I go down the list. And if you're interested in the details, uh, the you know the very very uh, you know tight details, you can go ahead and look at the uh, tier list slash ranking spreadsheet that is in the description. So without further ado, let's uh, let's start with Titan exotics, and we're gonna go in alphabetical order. So we're starting with Abeyant Leap. So Abeyant Leap. Um, Abeyant Leap basically just improves the Drenger's Lash aspect on Berserker Titan. Uh, it makes it so that the lashes, uh, they are more aggressive, they cover a longer distance, and there's more lashes. So you suspend more enemies, and you also get woven when you suspend. Now the problem with this is that suspend was nerfed hugely uh, after this exotic got released. So a lot of people were like, yeah, this is the quintessential Strand Titan exotic. That was pre-Banner of War, and that was also pre-suspend nerf. Uh, nowadays, of course, CC is not as important in, you know, optimal endgame content, which is what this channel is kind of about. So Abeyant Leap wasn't a huge favorite of mine to begin with, but after the suspend nerf, uh, you know, there's very little reason to choose Abeyant Leap, especially when your mantra is offense being the best defense, which would make you want to pick Banner of War on Strand Titan instead of something like Drangers, a more defensive setup. So we're going to go ahead and I think we've placed Abeyant Leap in the... Oh, where do we put it? Hold on, I'm blind. Abeyant Leap is in the B tier. We're, we're gonna place it in the B tier. Uh, it's ranked 20th, and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about Abeyant Leap. Let's move on to ACD Zero Feedback Fence. So ACD Zero Feedback Fence, um, this is a pretty cool exotic, actually. I really like how they reworked it. I think a lot of people haven't really paid attention to this. I've seen some pretty cool builds with this, actually. So how this works is that melee hits grant you armor charge. And melee hits, um, there's no internal cooldown, actually. So if you have an ability that hits a target multiple times with your melee, it counts for multiple armor charges. So I've seen builds using melee kickstarts that allow you to get, like, um infinite like flesh at storms which is like really really cool um you can basically just like run melee kickstarts and just like repeatedly <laughs> flesh at storm like a boss uh which is you know kind of uh situational and uh kind of quirky and not like super effective in end game content but i actually didn't know that this exotic uh was so like nicely reworked i thought that it was a really good rework for this exotic um you know i'm a big fan of anything that's on hit and not on kill and getting armor charge just from like hitting something is like pretty pretty nice honestly it's very, very niche right and if you're gonna go for a melee exotic there's definitely better melee exotics out there more potent ones like syntheseps but um it's still nice i think it's a, it's a cool exotic and uh you know i think it uh, deserves to be in the c tier we're gonna put in the c tier and uh you know the tiers will start to make more sense as we populate the tier list more and more um but it's ranked 22nd uh and just just to be clear melee hits on uh um, you know granting your armor charge it's not the only effect you can see here you have melee damage resist there's that kind of arc burst that consumes your armor charges and you also get jolt off of uh doing that burst as well so um yeah that's pretty much it let's move on next up we have actium war rig so actium war rig um <laughs> it's it's very much like uh you know it, it very much forces you to use a very very specific style of gameplay and that is probably going to be using something like sweet business or uh you know a grand overture maybe or something like uh, uh retrofit right and unfortunately you know the the two weapons that this uh, exotic enables so auto rifles and machine guns those weapon types are not really great in endgame content uh especially you know giving up your entire exotic slot just so you don't have to reload a machine gun is you know a little bit silly uh now granted 
Titan does have a distinct lack of reload, like auto reload options that do not require you to manually reload your weapon. So that is kind of a plus. However, if this exotic, you know, auto reloaded like rocket launchers or something or grenade launchers, it'd be probably a lot more useful. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put Actium War Rig uh, in the... Oh, what tier do we put it in? I believe we put it in the D tier. Yeah, it's in the D tier and it is ranked 32nd. Okay, next up we have Antaeus Wards. Oh no, we don't have Antaeus Wards actually. Um, this spreadsheet, the data compendium, which is again linked in the description if you're interested, uh, jumps around a lot because there's some exotics that are on all three classes, for example. So we're going to go to Aeon Safe. So Aeon Safe, uh, a lot of people know and love the Aeon exotics for generating ammo. Obviously on classes like Titan and Hunter where you don't have access to Cenotaph Mask, uh, Aeon is going to be your only bet in terms of generating heavy ammo. Now that being said, uh, you know, I, I do also rank exotics holistically, so Aeon Safe, does Titan have subclasses that are good for safely finishing enemies even in endgame content? And the answer is yes. You have Hammer Titan, you have Void Titan, um, really even Arc Titan, you could use Arc Titan and you would be pretty safe in terms of finishing a champion or finishing a mini boss. So I think the Aeon exotic uh, plays well on Titan. And of course, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Aeons uh, have a lot of cool effects. Uh, most people know about Sect of Insight the most, um, but it has some interesting effects like providing a, a 30 Five, I believe a 35% buff to your teammates for like 20 seconds for finishing a mini boss if they are on another sect that's not in sight. So, you know, I would appreciate if you guys, um, not appreciate, but I think you guys would appreciate it if you went ahead and just looked at what these uh, Aeon effects do. Uh, sect of Vigor, you know, Sect of Force are not that important, uh, but Sect of Insight is actually quite good. Uh, and I, I think, uh, you know, it has a lot of stuff that's not just ammo. So I, I recommend that you guys take a look at it. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool uh, effect. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, Aeon Safe in the A tier. In the A tier, it is ranked fifth. Um, there are exotics on Titan uh, that are a lot more potent than just generating ammo and uh, are more about abilities than they are about weapons. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys can tell what's going to be in the S tier, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Okay, next up we have an Insurmountable Skull Fort. So an Insurmountable Skull Fort is pretty cool. It's very much an ability-based uh, exotic compared to something like Aeons. And um, basically, it's if you're on an Arc subclass and you get a powered kill, you just get 100% of your melee back. You get your whole melee back. So people used to use this thing, or I think they kind of still do, uh, on Ballistic Slam on Titan. And you would basically just repeatedly Ballistic Slam enemies and have hands-on. And it's basically like a free super. Uh, in the same way people use Vesper or Sunbracers to farm uh, Super on Warlock, or they use, uh, you know, Radiant Dance Machines and Reaper, or, you know, Assassin's Cowl and Arc Hunter to farm Super, you can do the same thing with Insurmountable Skullfort. Unfortunately, Insurmountable Skullfort is on an okay subclass on Titan, uh, forces you to play Arc, which is okay, it's alright, you know, it's alright for in-game content. And um, unfortunately, its effect is relatively, you know, it's it just gives you your melee back, which is like, Arc Hunter does that as part of the subclass, which is okay. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need an exotic for that. And then obviously, you know, Solar Warlock with something like Sunbracers, that's a lot more potent, has a lot more range, a lot less risk. Um, so that's why, you know, Skull Fort, I think we're going to go ahead and put it uh, in the A tier. It's not an S tier exotic. Uh, it does have some use. It's definitely at the bottom of A tier. I think we've ranked it 10th, uh, but it's not, you know, it's not crazy, but it's not like horrible either. Okay, um, let's move on. Let's go to Antaeus Wards. Okay, so Antaeus Wards, uh, this is pretty much like exclusively a PvP exotic. And uh, after it's nerfed next season, or I believe, I don't know if it got nerfed this season or next season, but uh, where it consumes your class ability energy, uh, this exotic is definitely not a great one to be using in PvE. Not that it was great to begin with. Uh, you're going to see a lot of exotics that are like very PvP centric are going to place very low on this list because their effect doesn't really, you know, do anything for you in PvE. And Antaeus Wars, I would argue, is so bad that it literally, like, it, it is worse than just not having an exotic because it consumes your ability energy for something that is not that useful. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the F tier. Uh, I think we've ranked it 39th, which places it third last out of all the exotics on Titan. Okay. Moving on, let's talk about Arbor Warden. So Arbor Warden is definitely an interesting exotic. Uh, it lets you throw your barricade and your barricade inherits the properties of any subclass modifications that you have. So for example, um, you know, Bastion, Dranger's Lash, stuff like that. Now, this is cool. You know, it's like, it's very unique, it's quirky, but it is that, it's quirky, right? And in in-game content, this basically doesn't really have any use. 
Uh, so, <laughs> you know, as much as it's an interesting concept, we're going to go ahead and put it in the F tier. I mean, it, it, it basically just forces you to cycle your cooldowns in a different way than you normally would for something that is, like, useless. Like, it's, you know... It, I don't, I don't know what they were going- maybe they were going for some sort of titan power fantasy where you like throw your barricade in front of your enemy- your teammates to like, you know, support them on the battlefield or something, but this isn't Overwatch, so, you know. <laughs> not very- not very useful. Definitely not in PvE. Okay, next up we have Armamentarium, which is right underneath that. Uh, Armamentarium has a single job. It's a very simple job. Uh, most double grenade exotics force you to play a specific subclass or use a specific grenade. Armamentarium uh, says, you know, screw that. We're just going to give you an extra grenade. That's it, right? I would love for this exotic to do probably something a little bit more than that. But to be honest, on Titan, uh, you have some pretty strong grenades, right? You have hard, you have, not sorry, heart. You have touch of thunder pulse grenades, touch of thunder storm grenades. You have grapple for movement. Um, so, you know, just being that versatile and giving you an extra grenade on any grenade uh, is kind of useful, right? It's not bad. Uh, so I went ahead and put Armamentarium in the A tier, and I put it, I believe, between Aeons and Insurmountable, it is ranked 7th, yeah. So you can use Armamentarium on a lot of different things, and um, yeah, it's pretty cool, especially for short kind of encounters where having two grenades is all you need until you get another rally, uh, or until you, you know, are waiting uh, downtime between encounters or between fights, you know, it can be pretty useful. Okay, uh, next up we have Ash and Wake. I think Ashen Wake is overrated by some of the community and underrated by other parts of the community. Um, basically what this exotic does is if you get fusion grenade kills, they detonate instantly so there's no delay. Uh, as soon as they hit a target, they'll go boom. And number two is depending on what kind of enemies you kill with the fusion grenade, which if you have Roaring Flames on, uh, you'll you know, you'll probably kill them. Uh, you get a lot of grenade refund back. In fact, if you kill just like a couple enemies, you get almost all of your grenade back or your full grenade back most of the time. And this even scales into endgame content. A Roaring Flames times three fusion grenade will kill most uh, red bars, if not all red bars, in almost all tiers of endgame content. So this is pretty useful. Um, it's not as good as something like Sunracers, for example, on Warlock, but uh, it's pretty useful. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's a good exotic. Also, it's used for end it's used for uh, AFK farming, which a lot of endgame players do. I didn't account for that when I'm when I was scoring it. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, fun little quirky fact. So we're going to go ahead. I'm, I put it right above Armamentarium. Uh, it does lock you into playing Solar. But again, any any exotic that forces you to play a good subclass, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. So. I went ahead and put it in the A tier. It is ranked uh, sixth, I believe, ar above Armamentarium. Okay, next up we have Cadmus Ridge Landscap. So this is a cool exotic, actually. I kind of like um, Cadmus Ridge Landscap. Landscap. Sorry, I'm not saying that correctly. Um, I kind of like Cadmus Ridge Landscap. Basically, it's a diamond lance focused exotic, um, and it just makes it so that again on hit right on precision hits uh you spawn a diamond lance right next to yourself so one of the biggest issues with diamond lance is that normally when you make a diamond lance it spawns on the enemy that you kill and in a gm it's not really viable to go up to an enemy that you kill on their corpse and pick up the diamond lance because you're putting yourself in danger um and of course you also need kills normally to make a diamond lance however uh with cadmus ridge lance cap you kind of get rid of two of those disadvantages now Diamond Lance is not that useful in in-game content, so whether or not this is like a good compromise and a good use of your exotic slot is still questionable. But I think, you know, if Diamond Lance gets buffed or if Stasis gets reworked, uh, this could definitely be a decent exotic. Um, it's just unfortunately, you know, it's tied to the Stasis subclass, which is, you know, one of the one of the weakest, if not the weakest on Titan. Um, no, definitely the weakest on Titan, what am I saying? So, yeah, I've gone ahead and put this thing in the C tier. It's like a cool exotic. Uh, I like how it works, and I like that it's definitely like end game compatible because it's on hits and it spawns stuff near you and it's safer. Um, but, you know, the offensive utility just isn't there because we're talking about Diamond Lances and it's, you know, tied to stasis. So, not great. Okay, uh, and that's ranked 28th, uh, to be clear. Okay, next up we have Sightens. Sightens is another PvP-centric exotic, although, you know, it's kind of been gutted in PvP too, so it kind of has no home. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's any surprise. Sightens is going to go in the F tier. Uh, in endgame content, like as in any content where the enemies, you know, don't just ignore you pretty much uh, and die instantly, this the barricade just disappears instantly. Like, it, it, it melts in a flash. That's number one. Number two, being able to shoot through your barricade is not very useful. Uh, if this thing allowed you to shoot through your bubble, which I don't think Bungie will ever allow that because of PvP concerns, uh, but if this thing allowed you to shoot through your bubble, like maybe it would be useful in some universe, uh, but they'd probably reduce the health of your bubble significantly too. And at that point, it's just like, why are you not using well? So 
Yeah, Scythe's is definitely a bit of a, a silly exotic to be using in PvE, and uh, I've placed it in the F tier because it, it genuinely like undermines your gameplay. It is worse than just using a normal barricade, and it forces you to have that long cooldown as well. So um, yeah, gone ahead and put it in the F tier at the bottom. It is ranked 41st, the worst Titan exotic in endgame PvE. Next up, we have Crest of Alpha Luffy. So Crest is basically two things, right? Uh, you heal when you place your barricade, which is not very useful, right? I mean, there's a lot of access to healing on Titan, especially on stuff like Solar Titan and Strand Titan. You get healing pulses from Banner of War. Uh, you can get heals from orb pickups. You have Woven Mail. Uh, on, you know, on Solar Titan, I don't even need to list the infinite number of sources that you have of healing uh, and cure and all that stuff. So, you know, Crest is not that useful. Like, waiting on your entire barricade cooldown just to get a bit of healing is not that helpful. Um, the only thing that I would say is kind of useful about Crest is that, uh, you can make four orbs off of Ward of Dawn, which is kind of useful in some speedrunning scenarios. Uh, for example, in Last Wish speedruns when there used to be a Titan, they would place a bubble on Crest in order to generate four orbs for the Hunters on Feast of Light, but it's, that's a very, very, like, limited use, and, uh, I don't think this exotic really stands up and, you know, to, to modern gameplay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in the D tier. Uh, I think it is slightly above Acting Warg. Yeah, it's ranked 31st, and we're just gonna leave it in the D tier. Yeah, this thing doesn't have uh, much use in endgame content right now whatsoever. And I would love to see this thing reworked uh, to be more potent and focus more on subclass interactions, or at the very least, you know, don't do, you know, one quarter of what most subclasses already do for Titan. Okay, um, what do we have next? We have Curious. Okay. So, Curious is kind of the best of a bad situation uh, on Titan uh, in general. The best overall like damage super just flat out uh, is going to be Curious of the Falling Star Thunder Crash. Still, uh, Pyrogale is situational because it's dependent on boss model and uh, requires you to get stacks ahead of time. And uh, yeah, it, and then of course like Blade Fury also requires you to be surrounded. So if you just want a brain dead damage super on a boss that's you know something you can directly impact pretty easily and you can get away from safely with the Curious Overshield, this is kind of going to be your best bet. So, you know, as strong as Strand Titan is, as strong as Solar Titan is, uh, Curious is still going to place relatively high on this list because it's just very brain dead and applicable in a lot of activities. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the A tier. Uh, I've ranked it fourth. Uh, you may see Curious move down over time. Uh, because, you know, Arc Titan is just no longer really the best Titan subclass. Like, if we're talking optimal gameplay, we're talking players that are willing to play all three classes. If you need raw damage and you're not surrounded, so you can't be on Strand Titan or, you know, anything like that. Um, obviously, other classes are going to be better, like Hunter and Warlock are both better for damage. And in terms of just, you know, general gameplay, you're probably not going to be playing Arc Titan if you're playing Titan in a combat intensive scenario as well. So, Curious, it's, it's very, you know... It's good for stuff like Rolk Final Stand Day 1 and stuff like that, but like, you know, times have changed. So you, you probably will see this move down in future season, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, next up we have Doomfang Pauldron. Um, this exotic, I think the people that know what it does think it's underrated. I think they are overrating it. But I think the rest of the community also, I think a large portion of the community doesn't know what this exotic does. Um, they also reworked this thing to do like the there, there's tons of exotics now that they've reworked that used to be very singular and do only one thing and they basically slapped on you know like flex tape just like kind of slapped on uh an x4 surge effect that is uh, extendable using you know uh, subclass matching kills so this is one of them right uh you can get uh times four void weapon surge which is not a particularly useful affinity um, but the main thing, the main draw of this exotic is that you get 20% of your super energy for a void kill. Now, that sounds really good actually, right? For, sorry, a powered void melee kill, I should say. So like shield throw or shield bash. Now, that sounds really good. However, uh, unfortunately, you're on void titan. So the supers that you're going to be getting relatively frequently with this exotic are two of them. You have bubble, which is almost useless in endgame PvE, and you have banner shield, which is even more useless in endgame PvE. So if this exotic, right, if this effect were tied to literally any any subclass that had a useful super, uh, like, you know, like T crash or literally any like the, you know not bubble or banner shield um this would probably be a lot more useful however you know unfortunately the supers that you're getting very quickly using this are just you know not great and the, the extension of like 
shield throw on banner shield is also not helpful because sentinel shield let's be real if you're using banner shield you're using it for the damage boost and protecting your teammates um you know we've had some ideas in my chat about how to buff this exotic to maybe create like a really big slam if you hit a lot of targets with your shield throw at the end or if you like block damage um but that's something we'll discuss in a future video for now i'm gonna go ahead and rank doom fang pauldron in the b tier in the b tier and i think i've placed it above abeyance it is ranked 14th yeah it's ranked 14th okay next up we have dune marchers okay so dune marchers are basically exclusively a movement exotic uh on titan uh they are titans like sprint faster exotic every class has a sprint faster exotic on warlock you have t-steps on hunter you have stompies and on titan you have dune marchers so um dune marchers are like T-steps, they increase your sprint speed, they increase your slide distance, and they also have this nice chaining effect. Uh, it no longer works with uh, throwing hammer, which I, you know, I really like, you know, chaining enemies with throwing hammer. That was pretty fun. Uh, but it's still pretty good. Like, it's a good exotic. It's good for applying, like, a Trinity Ghoul-like effect in speedrunning. Uh, Dune March is still used in speedrunning sometimes uh, for, you know, chaining off of powered close contact melees like Ballistic Slam. So, um, you know, I think it has some use in endgame content, but for the most part, you know, if you're on neutral gameplay these days on Titan, you're going to be on Synthos or Lion, uh, even for movement stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and put Dune Marchers in the C tier. Uh, they're definitely very, very situational in when they're used. Pretty much just speedrunning or kind of a personal preference thing if you're just running around and like punching ads. But again, uh, we're talking endgame content here. So I've placed them above Cadmus and I think they are ranked 26. 26. All right, next up we have uh, Eternal Warrior, I believe. Yeah, so Eternal Warrior I think is actually a little bit underrated um eternal warrior for those of you that don't know is another exotic that got that kind of x4 surge times four surge max stack surge effect slapped onto it and um a lot of you probably think this is just a super swap exotic right if you have fists of havoc you switch to it you get the overshield you pop now the cool thing about this exotic is that you can rally on fists of havoc and then you can cast your super you can end your super and you have times four arc weapon surge for 30 seconds that's, that's really long i think that's actually the longest surge effect in the game if i'm not mistaken that's really really long and the thing is you can also get any arc kill to extend this surge effect so theoretically now this is i haven't seen this in practice because i don't think anyone really knows about this or it, maybe it's not as useful as i think it is but you could start an activity with full super you could use eternal warrior and then get that surge effect um, and you could just kill enemies with arc weapons every once in a while, and you will basically have X4 arc weapon surge for the entire activity. Now, how useful that is, is, you know, up for debate, but I think it is a pretty cool effect, and, um, it definitely elevates this thing above just, like, a super swap exotic for a very weak PvE super, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in the B tier, uh, I'm gonna place it right underneath, uh, Doomfang, I believe, and I placed it 15th, placed it 15th out of all, uh, what is it, 41? 41. Titan Exotics. Okay, next up we have Hallow Fire Heart. Hallow Fire Heart. So, Hallow Fire Heart is, um, it got reworked recently because it was definitely being overshadowed by the other Titan Exotics, uh, like Hoyle, mostly Hoyle. And um, basically, this is like, a, if you like sunspots, it makes sunspots, makes a lot of sunspots. Any solar kill that you get, uh, while you're in a sunspot will make a new sunspot now titan kind of already does this uh soul invictus kind of already does this uh but this makes it so that literally any solar kill will make a sunspot and not just ability kills uh so that's kind of cool you know you can use it with sunshot or something like that and um you also of course get that nice 350 percent boost to your grenade and melee regen rate when your super is full so i don't think that's enough to kind of pull this over something like synthos or something like hoyle um, but it's still good. It's still good. It's just an alternative. It's basically just an alternative. I don't think the uptime is really like a big selling point here, but I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the A tier. It's still a pretty solid exotic. And uh, I think I placed it right above insurmountable. And that's going to be ninth. It's going to be ninth in our total ranking. Okay, next up we have Hoyle. Okay, now Hoyle is a classic. Uh, Hoyle, I just mentioned it as a competitor to Hallow Fireheart. But the difference is with Hoyle is that Hoyle works on any subclass and it empowers all of your abilities right it also increases the damage of some of your abilities so like your grenade for example and your melee do increase damage which is not something that most ability regen exotics do um it does not require any kills it does not require any setup besides just using your exotics this exotic literally just benefits you from doing what you're doing normally which is using your abilities right so this is like you know the ultimate endgame exotic it works on any subclass it works beautifully on any subclass and um 
even with its nerfs down to five seconds and they've scaled some like the damage back and they've definitely scaled the class ability thing back because of thruster it's still like very very good and um you know bungie has the kind of they're on pins and needles here whenever they release a new, uh, release a new titan subclass that has strong abilities because hoyle is just going to superpower those abilities supercharge those abilities right so we're going to go ahead and put this in the s tier uh this is our first s tier titan exotic i believe i placed it second and i think you guys know it's going to be coming up as first but uh hoyle is very good even post nerf um, it's not the beast it used to be, you know, it's not used in damage strategies as much anymore, uh, especially with, uh, you know, Banner of War being a thing, uh, but it's, you know, it's it's definitely worth a shout. And uh, in speedrunning as well, it has some, you know, uh, has some use in charging some abilities uh, quickly in some short-term scenarios by just placing your barricade, for example. Okay, moving on, we have uh, Helm of Stain 14. Okay, so Helm of Stain 14... This one's a bit of a fall from grace. Well, I don't know if you could call it grace, but this one's a fall from grace. You know, people used to place helm bubbles, get that 35% buff all the time. And then Bungie had to go and nerf it to 25% for some reason. And uh, yeah, this thing, uh, a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of coping Titan mains uh, seem to think this is like an alternative to Well of Radiance. Guys, you could just strafe in and out of a, a ward bubble, you know, or sorry, a helm bubble. You know, it's a, it's like the same thing as well. It's not, it's not. Uh, that overshield is like paper thin in endgame content. I'm not going to lie to you. And the blinding effect is also pretty useless. <laughs> like, uh, you're basically just blocking your teammates from shooting enemies inside of the bubble, and you're blinding them, which doesn't do anything for you. Um, there were some very, very niche applications of Helm of Saint 14 in speedrunning, where you would place it on top of a bunch of ads that you wanted to be still, so that they wouldn't move, and then you could use them for surrounded, or you could use them to just keep them there, so that you could, you know, switch to worm gods and get a bunch of melee kills. But those days are kind of over for the most part, and uh, I don't think we're going to see this exotic make a comeback uh, until bubble is changed or until damage strategies change a very significant amount and the fact that you basically are not improving your neutral gameplay whatsoever until you switch to this exotic it's exclusively a swap exotic so i'm going to go ahead and put it in the c tier it's right at the top of c tier i think it's definitely um more applicable than all the exotics down here uh but it's definitely yeah it's definitely not moving into the b tier with stuff like doomfang and eternal and uh, a ban leap okay next up we have hoarfrost okay so hoarfrost is like Horfrost is kind of like stasis specialized hoil in the way that Hallowfire is like solar specialized hoil. Uh, Horfrost basically replaces your barricade with a glacier grenade, like a modified glacier grenade. And that's good because, you know, on Titan, uh, on Behemoth, on stasis subclasses, there are fragments that benefit from being near stasis crystals. Uh, there are fragments that benefit from breaking stasis crystals. And it's basically just having two stasis crystals, two grenades, two glacier grenade charges it's like armamentarium except for your barricade cooldown is is lower than your grenade cooldown right so um yeah it's it's pretty cool and uh the glacier grenade still inherits rally barricade bonuses so if you have rally barricade on you can have those reload effects near you which is pretty cool um however uh like i said with stuff like cadmus ridge lance cap this is attached to behemoth and behemoth is not in a great spot right now so we're gonna go ahead and put it in the C tier. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it right underneath Cadmus Ridge Lance Cap. I think Cadmus Ridge has slightly more applications because it's a little bit more of a distance exotic if you wanna play a CC subclass. But you know, I, I, you can take it or leave it. You can put Horfrost above Cadmus if you really wanted to, I don't really care. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to Icefall Mantle. Okay, so Icefall Mantle, uh, is another another of those exotics that Bungie was like, okay, well this exotic's underperforming, it's kind of lame, but it has some subclass kind of you know interactions. Let's slap on an X4 surge effect. So yeah, this thing gives you an X4 surge effect. Uh, I believe it's when you activate the glacial guard thing. A lot of people complain about this thing because you're basically sacrificing your class ability, so you can have some overshield, and then you're kind of like your movements disabled a little bit. Um, I don't know. <laughs> The stasis, the biggest problem with stasis is that it plays into a, a passive playstyle too much and it doesn't really have much offensive utility compared to other subclasses and Icefall Mantle doesn't really do much to remedy that and also doesn't really play into ability cycling as much as some of the other exotics on this list. So while, you know, I'm appreciative of the, the stasis boost, you know, it's, it's probably um maybe find some niche use with like cold comfort or something it's not enough to like pull this thing into being like a top tier exotic that being said i i think the stasis boost is still kind of useful because uh it doesn't require you to like pop a super and then end the super like eternal warrior and stasis boost is good on something like cold comfort so you know it's basically just place your you know use your barricade and then you have x4 surge right one of the easiest ways to get x4 surge in the game so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the B tier, and I think we've ranked it 16th, which places it right underneath Eternal Warrior. Okay, 
Um, next up, we have Kepri's Horn. So Kepri's Horn is another on barricade placement type of exotic. Uh, there's some funny clips in trials of people using this thing to like kill people through walls and stuff with the wave. Uh, in PvE though, is this thing very useful? Not really. Uh, this is very much like a PvP centric exotic, I, in my opinion. Uh, it makes like a solar wave, which is like there are weapons that make solar waves and uh, Titan in general, like on solar already kind of has access to grenades and to abilities that create much more potent splash damage when it comes to solar damage. Uh, and of course, if you're going to talk about an ability regen exotic that gives you an ability back, probably the least important ability on Titan in PvE is the class ability, right? Like the, you know, barricade is not that useful. <laughs> so, you know, this is like an ad clear exotic that uses your barricade cooldown. It's a bit silly. Um, definitely not super applicable in endgame content. So I've gone ahead and put it in the D tier. And I think we've placed it underneath Actium War Rig. It is ranked 34th. And we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Okay, Lion Rampant. Now, Lion Rampant is um, Lion Rampant is actually pretty important on Titan. It is what makes Catapult Lift usable for sword flying and, you know, very good for sword flying. Um, as you can see here, Catapult Lift goes from one second to four seconds on Lion Rampant. Um, Titan is the only class in the game that is able to infinitely horizontally travel uh, with sword ammo uh, or even no sword ammo, to be honest, and uh, never fall right without using anything like a sparrow. So Lion Rampant enables that. Um, line Rampant is also like essential if you're using Titan on any sort of jumping puzzle, which, you know, those are present in endgame content. Um, so yeah, Line Rampant is just useful in general. Uh, it's useful even on high lift. Um, yeah, I, I would say Line Rampant is uh, honestly a more applicable Titan exotic in terms of movement than something like Dune Marchers. Yeah, because a big weakness of Titan, uh, especially on Catapult Lift, which is the fastest uh, movement you can use on a movement lift you can use on a sword. Uh, you know, that short duration is a real killer in, in a lot of in a lot of aspects. So uh, yeah, line rampant is pretty important. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the A tier. Uh, it's used very frequently in endgame content, I would say. And uh, yeah, it's ranked 11. So we're going to put it right over here. Okay, next up we have Loralee. Okay, so Loralee Splendor Helm. Um, I, when this thing first released, a lot of people were using it in endgame content, especially newer players, because it was very easy to uh, crutch up on uh, basically an AFK exotic. Uh, there's clips of people doing like solo Flawless Prophecy that I remember watching because my friends were sending them to me, and they were like, this guy is playing, like he has no idea how to play the game, he is not moving, he's not dodging the boss's attacks, he should be dying, but he's basically just AFKing while the enemies hit him and his restoration is just saving him, right? So this thing, I mean, Lorley is basically, when it released, uh, it gave Titans access to tier two restoration, which is something that was only available on Warlocks otherwise. And uh, you don't have to do anything for it. You just get low and it makes a sunspot underneath you and it gives you a tier two restoration. Now, now that that's been bumped down and you basically just make a sunspot underneath you, which is something you're already doing on Solar Titan if you're not AFK, uh, this exotic is basically useless. It takes what solar titan does and it just does it. it it doesn't like do anything right and when you're low it just consumes your barricade for you so it's like there is nothing that this exotic does that solar titan already doesn't have out of the box and then it doesn't give you anything ability utility wise it doesn't you know buff your abilities in any way so this is a pretty useless exotic now uh there's no reason to use this like ever <laughs> solar titan's already extremely brain dead and easy to play so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the F tier uh, because it's it's like a waste of an exotic slot. Like the F tier here is either like literally worse than not using an exotic or just doesn't literally doesn't do anything. And that's what Loralee is. In my opinion, Loralee is kind of worse because it forces you to consume your barricade when you get low, which is something I'd rather not do. Uh, you know, if it's not my choice. Okay, next up we have Mask of the Quiet One. Okay, I think Mask of the Quiet One, I'm gonna rank it pretty low, but I think it is a little bit underrated. Uh, I think people write it off as an exotic that's like an old exotic and you should never use it. And I, I do think you probably should never use it, but um, it does have a nice, um, you know, it gives you uh, 1 20th, I'll say, it says 5%, so I'll say 1 20th of your abilities every time you get damaged, right? And it's, every, it's once per second. So that means that every 20 seconds, you'll get all of your abilities back if you're taking constant damage. And that stacks on top of your already natural regen. So, you know, Mask of the Quiet one, I think it's, I don't know, maybe there's some use for it in some very niche scenarios uh, where you need to get your abilities back and you're constantly receiving damage. Um, but there's other exotics that just buff your abilities in general more, like Hoyle, just for using them and not taking damage. And um, the, the healing to 70 HP thing is, is practically useless in endgame PvE. 70 HP is not much at all. 
and um, it's only while you're at critical, so while you're already in the red. Um, so yeah, Mask of the Quiet one, I'm gonna go ahead and rank it in the D tier. I think the exotic, like, the effect is a little bit slept on, but, like, I'm not gonna recommend using this exotic by any stretch. So we're gonna put this thing rank 33, that's gonna be right above Kepri's Horn. And, um, next we have Mark 44 Stand Asides. Okay, so, Mark 40, did I just, okay, never mind, sorry. Mark 44 Stand Asides, um, back when Heavy Handed was a thing with Charged with Light, I used to use this thing a lot because Heavy Handed would refund half of your melee, and Mark 44 Stand Asides would refund the other half of your melee. So what you could do is you could just infinite shoulder charge on any shoulder charge subclass. So it's like, uh... It's like insurmountable skill fort, except you can do it on any subclass. And also, I believe um, this didn't require a kill, right? Yeah, this is just damage. So you could basically infinitely shoulder charge like a champion or something like that, um, as long as you have charge with light stacks. Now, now that heavy handed doesn't exist anymore, or the, the mod does something else, it's, it still has the name heavy handed, but it does something completely different. And now that melee kickstarts are reworked from how heavy handed used to work, this exotic doesn't have that functionality anymore. And shoulder charges are kind of like at an all-time low in terms of how useful they are. Uh, there are other powered melee abilities on Titan that are much more potent, much more powerful, that do not interact with exotic whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the D tier. It's at the top of the D tier. Um, definitely more useful than like all of these exotics and all of these exotics, but yeah, you're never going to use this thing. You're never going to use this thing in endgame content. Okay, next up we have NBP, no backup plans. So a lot of my commenters actually were um, constantly telling me about this exotic. They're like, you're underrating this exotic, you're not talking enough about this exotic. And um, okay, so here's the deal, here's the deal, okay? No backup plans, how it works is when you have Void Overshield, you get a 35% boost to shotgun damage. So shotguns are, you know, kind of meta in the, you know, in terms of damage right now. Um, now, it's not for all, uh, they're, they're meta basically for for like swap dps not as a main source of damage right so Acarius is the only shotgun that's really like a main source of damage that's i would consider to be meta but even Acarius in optimal scenarios most bosses you're not using Acarius, and on the bosses that you are using Acarius, it's still kind of situational when you're using Acarius, right like um there's pretty much no speedrunning bosses at least as far as i'm aware right now that use Acarius, like ekthor might in duo um and in solo but besides that i don't really see using Acarius. if you're doing tractor damage on titan i think there's more efficient ways to do tractor and that involve a damage super as well and you can also get a 35 percent buff to all of your weapons just from a teammate using lumina or from you using lumina so in terms of a general damage strategy in fire teams no backup plans doesn't really do anything um i mean the void overshield from the titan glaive counts but that's kind of a very quirky build way to get a 35 percent buff that you could already get from another exotic so no backup plans is it's kind of cope right i think it may it definitely has some situational use don't get me wrong it's definitely more useful than like maybe like half the exotics on this list but it's still not very good so i'm gonna go ahead and rank it i think i ranked it like right in the middle yeah i'm gonna i've ranked it 18th and that's gonna place it underneath icefall mantle right over here um yeah and i think that's a that's a fair ranking for it okay next up we have one-eyed mask okay so one-eyed mask is again pvp exotic pretty much ex you know explicitly a pvp exotic um i'm sure a lot of people have very poor memories of this exotic being used against them in pvp however um i'm gonna go ahead and uh yeah we're just gonna go ahead and rank this in the d tier it's uh yeah it's 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 not an exotic that's really meant for pve uh you can argue that the overshield is uh probably more useful than all of the useless slash bad effects of the f tier so i've gone ahead and put it at the bottom of d tier it's ranked 35th and uh yeah i don't i'm not really gonna talk about this exotic i mean the the effect is very straightforward okay uh <laughs> you get damaged by a boss and you kill it and you get an overshield yeah yeah that's a that's a genius move yeah that overshield is, is it's not like the weakest overshield in the world but it's not particularly uh strong overshields are kind of overrated in, in endgame pv in my opinion dr is a lot more important and um like weakening effects and overload effects are much more important if you're trying to survive uh, as well as healing effects, of course. Okay, next up we have Peacekeepers. Okay, so I mean, P uh, you know, speaking of PvP only exotics, uh, you know, SMG handling, SMG quality of life is, I guess, nice to have if you're using an SMG in endgame PvE for some reason, but are you gonna sacrifice your entire armor exotic for a non-damage boost 
uh, SMG movement slash handling exotic? Like, no. <laughs> I mean, it reloads your SMG, so in case you want to run double SMG in endgame PvE, you know, this is your exotic. Uh, but <laughs> this is almost as bad as, you know, Actium Warrior, maybe even worse. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the F tier. Uh, it's going to go right above Sidon's. Yeah, this thing does like nothing for you in, in endgame PvE. Okay, uh, let's keep going and let's move on. We have, what is this next? Peregrine? Yeah, Peregrine Greaves. Okay, so Peregrine Greaves is like, um, this was used on like in, in the Shield Bash era of, of Destiny when, you know, Shield Bash was unnerfed and, you know, it was doing big damage to bosses. It's like an alternative to Worm Gods because it has a lesser damage bonus, but doesn't require you to stack. It just requires you to be uh, midair. So you could proc this by just sprinting off a ledge and, sh you know, shoulder charging, one-two punching midair. Um, and it was pretty useful for that. That being said, these days, Peregrine Greaves, uh, I mean, it. I think it does... Yeah, it doesn't work with uh, Berserker because it's not a shoulder charge ability. So the primary, you know, powered melee gameplay, uh, you know, meta right now for Titan doesn't really involve Peregrine Greaves. So besides that, I don't think there's really any use for this thing. Uh, I mean, I, I know Selfu has like a, a quirky build where he uses like Peregrine Greaves on Titan uh, <laughs> and like Heart Shadow or something. But I don't think this thing has any real use in, uh, in endgame PvE. So I'm going to go ahead and place this thing in the C tier. Yeah, in the C tier. Yeah, I think this tier is very much making itself out to be like, uh, it, it does something useful, but like, I don't think you'd ever actually use it in endgame PvE in the current meta. So yeah, I think it's ranked 27th. Okay, next up we have Phoenix Cradle. Okay, so Phoenix Cradle is um, actually a bit underrated. Um, first of all, you give Soul Invictus to your allies, which is kind of useful, right? I mean, most, most, uh, I think, I would say all the classes in Destiny right now don't really need allied help to survive. Like, you can definitely build into a strong subclass where you can you're independent you don't need like the healing from your teammates but something that a lot of people don't know is that i mean everyone knows that soul invictus gives you uh the ability to regen but it also shares that property with your allies and there's not a lot of exotics in the game that give your teammates grenade regenerate and give your teammates especially melee regenerate right um for example uh, Jerfalkins gives class ability regenerate to your, to your teammates, and uh, Verities gives grenade regenerate to your teammates, but I don't think there, I, I think there's like no other exotics that give your teammates melee regenerate. So I think there might be some strats in the future, maybe in speedrunning, that involve giving soul invictus to your teammates to boost their uh regeneration rate for stuff like melees uh but that's that's very situational but i did think i would mention it because a lot of people don't know that phoenix cradle does share these properties with your teammates and i think that does have some useful effects in some scenarios right and of course phoenix cradle being tied to the solar subclass you're already shitting sunspots everywhere on solar and it's already a very good subclass on its own so branching out into this kind of unique effect where you're helping your team um not just in healing but also in of course add clear and in ability regen is i think partially useful partially useful so and of course doubling the effect of soul invictus or the uh duration is you know not a bad effect either so i'm gonna go ahead and place this thing in the a tier it's at the bottom of a tier i think it's definitely more useful than the exotics in b right now but it's uh it's you know it's a uh, kind of underrated kind of underrated i think okay next up we have point contact can embrace this is the thunderclap exotic uh basically how this exotic works is um you just get um you know your thunderclap energy back if you hit stuff and um it also jolts enemies uh if you if you hit them with thunderclap that that's basically it um this exotic i mean thunderclap is it's it's cool the main reason it's thunderclap is used it's it's for hoyle back then because it's like an instant cast uh melee that doesn't require you to be sprinting which was useful but thunderclap isn't useful for much outside of that uh if thunderclap worked with like one two punch in time um this maybe like might be useful i guess but i don't know thunderclap is not the strongest part of arc titan and building into it using an exotic is you know nothing but i i would say like a quirky build in endgame pve so i'm gonna go ahead and put point contact hand embrace uh, i believe in the c tier yeah i ranked it 25th which places it right above dune marchers okay next up we have precious scars Precious Scars is... I kind of like what they did to this exotic. This is another exotic that's been reworked uh, semi-recently, I guess. Uh, before, it used to just kind of give you and your teammates this kind of chain overshield, uh, which was, you know, good in, like, trials, I guess. I think people used to tell their trials carries to put this on. <laughs> but um, now, it uh, it gives you healing when you get a, a subclass matching weapon kill. And it, it bursts it to your allies as well. So, I mean, um, you know, that's, that's cool, kind of cool, I guess. Um, not a particularly, you know insanely helpful exotic in a again a sandbox where all the classes kind of have their own unique and strong 
ability gameplay loops where they don't really need help from their teammates. And of course, an exotic like Phoenix Cradle, that's a lot more useful than something like this. So Precious Scars, I, I think uh, it was a a positive rework it wasn't a bad rework that they did to this exotic but it certainly wasn't enough to bring it out of the d tier so we're going to put it right there uh it's in the does something helpful and it's not like bad but it's just it's like the the effect is nowhere near strong enough to be like warranted ever so yeah okay pyrogale pyrogale um i think pyrogale is like hugely overrated a lot of people are like um when this thing like first came out we're like blessing this thing praising it as like the the second coming of christ the best thing since sliced bread uh, this exotic is fine. I mean, you know, it's a swap exotic, right? You're basically using it on Solar Titan because there is no other exotic to use on Solar Titan if you want a damage super. Um, the main problem with Pyrogale is that it has a very slow windup animation compared to something like Thunder Crash. Thunder Crash is much faster to cast, so it actually ends up doing higher DPS than Pyrogale. I'm also pretty sure that the DOT effect from the Cyclones don't stack with your teammates, so that actually decreases damage the more people you have using this exotic. And the Consecration effect is cool, but I would rather be on Synthos <laughs> if I'm using Consecration. And um, it's just, you know, it's it's situational. Like on some bosses, it does very poor damage. On some bosses, it does good damage. But at that point, it's just like, you should just use Curus. So the only time you would ever use Pyrogale is number one, if you need to like stunlock a boss for some reason, like Crota on day one, some people were using this exotic. And number two is if you're on Solar Titan anyway, and you just want something to swap to, that's not like you're on Synthos or something, right? Like it's not on Synthos. But even then, it's just like, the Solar Titan Super has a lot of DR, and it has it's great for ad clear. So arguably, that you probably just want to stay on something that's not Pyrogale because you're probably not using this for damage because it's damage loss. It's damage loss against any good damage strategy that involves weapons. So rant aside, I think Pyrogale is overrated, but I'm still going to put it in the A tier. Um, you'll notice that like a lot of the exotics in B and lower are just like not really used in in-game content, to be honest with you. There's, there's not that many exotics that are good. This is a trend that kind of follows from the exotic weapon tier list. Just to remind you, in the exotic weapon tier list, basically two thirds of the exotics in Destiny were like in the D tier. Um, armor isn't as bad, but I would say that anything below A is basically not used in endgame content, to be honest with you. So we're going to put Pyrogale in the A tier for that reason. Um, and I put it, I believe, right underneath Armamentarium, and it's ranked eighth. Okay, enough yapping. Let's move on to Second Chance. Okay, so Second Chance, uh, this is the shield throw exotic. Uh, it basically gives you anti barrier shields and gives you two melee charges if you're using shield throw. And um, and it refunds your your shield throw if you stun a, a GM not 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 a GM if you stun a barrier champion uh, using this shield throw. Now, unfortunately, this exotic being explicitly uh, only on one melee ability, only on one subclass, and half its effect is specifically designed around champions, means this thing has very very niche and limited use. Um, it's it it weakens on shield throw, which is kind of useful in some like niche scenarios, like in like solo Nezrek on Titan. But uh, besides that, you know, it's just it, it's very this is like the definition of a situational exotic. So I'm going to go ahead and put second chance. Uh, I believe I put it in the B tier. Yeah, the B tier is definitely this is like the definition of a B tier exotic, to be honest with you. It's situational. It does some things well, but like you're not going to use this in a GM if you're playing optimally because Void Titan just isn't used in GM if you're playing optimally now that Strand Titan just exists with Banner. And um, I don't know, I guess the solo content is a shout out, but like it definitely doesn't deserve to be in the A tier. So I'm going to go ahead and put it at the top of B tier. Um, yeah, it's like bordering here. It's definitely like, a, you know, a defining feature of the B tier. All right, next up we have, okay, how many exotics? We have six left. We have six left. Okay, Severance Enclosure is up next. So Severance Enclosure, um, the way it works is any power melee kill that you get uh, or any finisher kill that you get makes like a explosion around the target. Um, the explosion is, I don't know, it's bigger than a lot of explosions that you would see from like weapon perks or some other abilities, but it's still not as like huge as you might expect. And it, the damage is also, it really falls off in endgame PvE. It's, it's just okay, right? Um, I'd honestly rather use a finisher slash power melee effect like Felwinner's Helm uh, in endgame PvE if I'm going to do something like that because, uh, you know, unless the damage is really high, which it's not, I'd rather have like weaken or CC on those enemies from doing a power melee or finisher. So, you know, that being said, this exotic is not like useless. It's not horrible. Uh, the, inc the internal cooldown kind of sucks, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to put it in the C tier. I'm putting the C tier. We're going to put it right underneath ACD zero and we're going to move on. Okay. Next up, we have stronghold. Now, stronghold is like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say this right now. There's a lot of exotics, armor exotics that we're going to talk about in this series that 
uh, explicitly affect a single weapon type, right? Stronghold is one of them. Peacekeeper is one of them. And I guess Acting Warg is kind of like one of them too, okay? Stronghold is, I would say, the strongest weapon-focused exotic by a long, long stretch. If swords were actually good, which they're pretty much just used for movement right now and crota damage, if swords were actually good in endgame PvE, right? If they actually had the offensive utility, the boss DPS, the whatever, like the, the champ roam killing capability that is like really, really high tier, if it was really, really good, Stronghold would be insane, okay? Stronghold is not held back by being a bad exotic. It's held back because swords are bad, okay? If swords were good, oh my god. <laughs> this exotic gives you up to 20 seconds, 20 seconds of tier 2 restoration. And when you're blocking with a sword, any sword archetype, right? Even the, even the bad sword archetypes that have bad guard duration, this thing maxes their stats, right? It does not require you to have any special perks on your sword. You can use this on pretty much any sword. And you have an insane amount of guard resistance. You have an insane amount of DR. This is basically the, the highest amount of passive DR you can get off one source in the game, as far as I'm aware. It's absolutely insane. This is absolutely insane. If you ever need to survive in endgame content and you don't want to kill anything, like you can't kill anything, like let's say you're minus 80, right? You're in a minus 80 like ultra grandmaster you know what exotic i'd be taking fucking stronghold bro this exotic is absolutely insane like the dr okay <laughs> i know i, I know i'm going a, a bit over my allotted time limit here but the stronghold is actually insane it, it is actually insane like the effect on this thing is so overtuned i'm telling you right now if swords were actually good this exotic would be insane but unfortunately it's held back by the limitations of swords having to go near enemies to do damage to them and of course not doing good splash damage and you know not being yeah swords are just not in a great place in endgame pv right now so um i'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in the s tier i'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in the s tier uh it is the effect is just so strong it is just so strong overall that i think it needs to be in the s tier um but you know if swords ever get a buff it'll it'll be even better but i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the s tier okay uh it's ranked third also to be clear uh next up we have syntheseps okay so speaking of an s tier exotic all right I think we all knew this was coming, okay? If you guys have all, you know, been looking at Destiny in general, have had your eyes open for the last, you know, six months, uh, or, I don't know, two years, three years, if you've played Destiny at all, you know Syntheseps has been the shit, okay? This thing has lived through several nerfs, uh, whether it's to its associated subclasses, whether it's to the exotic itself, and it has still come out on top every single time. Titan has always been, first and foremost, the OP melee class, and Syntheseps is part and parcel of that, right? Syntheseps has always been there, always been holding up Titan since day one, and unless they significantly change how this exotic works, and they're not, they're they're buffing it actually next season. Um, yeah, insane. Insane exotic. Uh, just requires you to be surrounded, which, you know, if you're punching stuff, you're going to be surrounded, so why is that even like that? Yeah, it's just it's a given, right? Uh, this thing is good for boss DPS. It's good for roam. It's good in general content. Uh, it boosts your super damage, which a lot of people don't know. So it al it's also a good general super exotic. It boosts all super damage, right? Uh, as long as you're surrounded. And on top of that, unlike regular surrounded, which you get off of like a weapon perk, for example, this thing lingers for eight seconds. For eight seconds, which means, which means you can be near enemies and then kill a bunch of enemies. And then for eight seconds, even if those enemies are dead, you're no longer surrounded, you still have biotic, okay? So Synthos are insanely overtuned. I think they probably do deserve a nerf, uh, especially to the biotic lingering thing. I think that's like kind of silly. Uh, or they should buff surrounded to kind of match that. I think they should like kind of meet in the middle somewhere. But um, yeah, Synthos are really, really strong. Uh, easily the, be the best Titan exotic. They enable like half the good damage strategies on Titan right now. Uh, just absolutely insane. They turn throwing hammer into something that consistently get kills in in-game content, uh, which really takes hammer Titan up to that next level in terms of survivability. You know, you're not making sunspots and you're not um, safe if you're not killing stuff. And Synthos helps you do that. So, yeah, Syntheseps is nuts. It is, you know, uh, if I had another tier above S, I'd probably put Synthos in there alone. Um, it's definitely much, much more viable and much more used on Titan than any other exotic on this list. I would say in endgame content, if you are on Titan and you're not doing movement stuff, Synthos is what you are on 95% of the time. And you can't say that for any other class. Right? Hunter and Warlock, in endgame content, there is a small diversity of exotics that you use. You're not going to be on one exotic all the time, right? Synthos is glued to the Titan arms if you are playing endgame content optimally. So I'm just going to put it in the S tier. All right. Um, next up, we have Path of Burning Steps. The Path of Burning Steps. Okay. Um, 
Path of Burning Steps is like the OG. I think this is where Bungie got their idea of giving X4 Weapon Surge with Firewalker. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they basically distributed the effect they gave to Path of Burning Steps to a bunch of other exotics on all the other classes, including Titan. And um, yeah, this is like the OG. Uh, that being said, you know, scaling up to get higher Weapon Surge is, you know, it's fine, I guess. Uh, it just doesn't really fit into the, you know, if, if we're talking, again, if we're talking optimal play and you're choosing between, you're able to choose between all the classes. On Titan, if you're doing, if you're aiming to do a lot of damage, you're probably going to be on Strand. And obviously Strand doesn't work with Path of Burning Steps. And if you're on Solar, you're probably not using Path of Burning Steps either because scaling up to a Surge is not really something that most people do when it comes to doing damage. Uh, so I guess this is like a decent roam exotic. Uh, if you're on Titan and you're continuously getting, you know, solar kills with something like Sunshot, but it's still like, I don't know, it, it's it, it's kind of in a weird place. It's kind of in a weird place. I'm not really sure where Path of Burning Steps fits into the endgame meta right now. Because um, again, if you're on Solar Titan, you're probably getting ability kills. If you're aiming to do a lot of weapon damage, you're probably on Strand or you're probably doing melee damage on Strand. So it's like, I'm not really sure where you use this exotic, even though the effect is not like horrible or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put Path of Burning Steps in the B tier, which makes sense and it's kind of next to uh, some of the other exotics that have similar effects. And uh, I'm going to go, go ahead and put it underneath Icefall Mantle and uh, we're going to move on. Okay, last two exotics. Ursa Furiosa. Okay, Ursa is actually um, kind of underrated, right? Um, I've said this before on stream, and I think I said this in my subclass tier list when I was talking with Above and Salty Greppo, but um, Ursa Furiosa, if we ever get a day one, if Bungie ever has the gall, to make the call, <laughs> uh, to make a day one where it is so dangerous, or the nerf well, uh, it is so dangerous that even in a well of radiance, you will not survive a boss's attacks. Whether it's because of environmental damage, whether it's because of an attack that's just so devastating that it will just straight up kill you, right? Um, you need banner shield, right? Banner shield is the only thing in the game that allows you to get a weapon damage boost and also protect you completely from any damage, right? It doesn't give you healing, it doesn't give you DR, it straight up blocks the damage, right? So, um, you know, having two Ursa Titans chaining back to back uh, is a viable strategy if that ever happens, right? Now, that being said, is Ursa Furiosa something that I would recommend using in GMs in the current sandbox compared to like, you know, the season 13, like year four? No, of course not. It's not that, we're, we're not in that sandbox anymore. Is there a boss scenario in current Destiny 2 where using Banner Shield is warranted? No, not really. So unfortunately, this is this exotic. You know, it, it's it's fine, right? It's good in in theory. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really have any use. It just doesn't have any re really real use right now. So I think that kind of fits with a lot of the stuff that's in the C tier right now. And uh, it's ranked twenty fourth. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it underneath Severance Enclosure. Okay. Last but not least, we have Worm God Caress. So Worm God Caress is one of two exotics that are identical with a Winner's Guile on Warlock that received a massive nerf um, because of, you know, Shield Bash mostly. Um, this thing used to do, I think, uh, around double its current damage at five stacks, and they basically nerfed it so it does slightly more than Synthos now, and it requires you to get five kills, and unlike Synthos, which doesn't require you to kill anything at all, which lingers for eight seconds after having killed the enemies, Worm God lasts last five seconds. It lasts five seconds, and you basically need to do all of your damage to a mini boss slash major slash boss within those five seconds if you want it to be useful at all. So, yeah. The only thing, now the only saving grace I will say for Worm Gods is that Syntheseps have decreased Glaive melee interaction damage. Worm Gods do not. So, if Glaiving things ever becomes useful, which I don't know why I'm saying that, but if glaving things ever becomes useful with a glaive, right? Worm Gods is probably the exotic you're going to want to be using because, um, you know, Synthos doesn't have a full buff. So that's all I have to say about Worm Gods. They they really took a fall from Grace here. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the B tier uh, right over here above uh, a ban and below no backup plans because uh, they're definitely above C tier. They're definitely above C tier in terms of usability, but uh, they, they definitely took a, like a hard fall, a hard fall from where they used to be a couple seasons ago. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the uh, armor exotic tier list on Titan. Um, you know, I think these exotics are pretty straightforward. Uh, although, don't let this tier list deceive you, right? Uh, much like the exotic tier list or for weapons, uh, pretty much every exotic below A tier is just not something I'd really ever recommend using if you're trying to play optimally and get better at playing optimally uh, on Titan for the most part. Um, 
And, you know, Titan is probably the most, like, boring class in terms of armor exotics right now. And 99% of the time, if you're playing Titan and you're aiming to, you know, be as potent as you can, you're, you're, you're on Synthos. Okay, you're, you're on Synthos. Okay, we could just name this, like, Synthos, right? I'll just make the video five seconds long, Synthos, put them on, yeah. So, uh, I'll update this probably next season when Synthos gets there. It's rework and we get the new exotics for next season and some of the exotics are buffed, nerfed, whatever. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure most of these are predictable. I think some of you guys might be mad about how low a ban is, but I'm just being realistic here with, you know, again, CC is not as useful in the sandbox if you're playing uh, optimally and Strand Titan has much, much better, uh, much higher ambitions now than playing defensively now. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And uh, I hope you guys learned a thing or two. And uh, I'll see you when we talk about, uh, I think, Warlock. Yeah, we're Warlocks next. So I'll see you then. Goodbye for now.